particular section oh. of the of the run course. So this is at the far end of the run course. They're on the this is almost like the dam wall by the the, the river. So we we've said it's mostly a flat course, but there is a there was a little yeah. rise yeah. that we saw Sebi pushing up there. So what's going to happen now? Is Lionel just going to try and go straight up? Oh, he, he he looked like he tried to pick up the pace there to me. He didn't want to pull up alongside. Try to go for that classic if you're going to pass pass strongly. Yeah. But Sebastian don't want to let him go. No, I'm, I'm sure Sebastian... I, he's prepared for this. Exact, I think there's a plan. He would have had plan. probably the last half an hour or so, yeah. knowing that in, in all likelihood this is going to happen, because yeah. they've been 30 seconds or so apart. But look, this is something different. We are at 17k right now, and there's 4k's to go. This is last year where Lionel actually felt Sebastian's weaknesses. Yeah. Now Sebastian, I hope that he... You know, knows yeah, by, what he's doing, this, yeah. By this point last year, Lionel had, had pulled away. It was about the 15k marker. So um, you can see on the, the, the expression on the face of Lionel there, he is digging deep into uh, that hurt locker. He is. That's Sebastian behind. Uh, he's not going to want to let him go. He definitely don't want to let him go. It actually looks like Sebastian is, is comfortable there. Yeah, he's maybe trying to get his breath back. It, it's almost like the... If you remember in Kona, was it in yeah. about 2010? Then uh, Chris McCormack was in the lead. He had a long. He knew that Andreas Raylock was closing him, so he had a, a long time to think about it and prepare for it. Yeah. Uh, Raylock closed, came alongside him, but was never able to to pull away. And then McCormack fought back and, and took a, a fantastic victory. Uh, I wonder if we're going to see something similar. But at the moment, it certainly didn't look like a pass. And then Sebi faded. He, no, he, no, he knew not it was all. coming. He um, looked at his watch, he was like, I got this, man. Don't worry <laughs> about me, I got this. So I don't, I don't think he's quite got the, I've got we, this yet. But uh, <laughs> No, he, but you know what? We, we, he's we, certainly we, ready for yeah, the fight. Exactly, yeah. and we saw that, we, we talked about the sprint finish, who won a sprint. I would love to see those two in the sprint finish today. That would be awesome. I will actually run down to the finish line and, and try to interview both of them when they cross this finish line to see the feeling and emotion. No matter what, who is going to what, be the what, winner? This is exciting. What's your experience of interviewing two two bodies that can't talk? I don't know, but <laughs> you that might would, need to develop it, that one yeah, in the exactly. next twenty minutes. Yeah, exactly. So they better you better write us if you want me to ask them about something special. You know, when they cross that finish line, because I will go there and I will try to get the emotion. Because there's no doubt that right now the emotion is out on the close. Can you say that? You know what I mean. The excitement is so high right now, and the tension are. Really, really, because this is what they expected. They expected them to to be side by side, and it took a long it way took today. Took a long time and a, yeah. and a very different story. You know, we could write the story, and yeah. sort of know roughly what we think the ending might have been. Yeah. The story up to this point has been completely different. Different, yeah. But somehow, by whatever route we got there, oh, and now oh, oh, they are oh, oh. <laughs> definitely going head to head. Uh, Sebastian is. Uh, Pushing again, he has uh, pushed past. This is this finish is even better than last year. I because get, I we, get goosebumps right now. Last year it's we turning. had three and a half hours of, of head to head through the race, yeah. and then Lionel pulled away and, and was clear. We yeah. are now what three kilometers away that's two miles away for, for those of you who prefer the uh, imperial system. So maybe 12 minutes or so of My running something of that order. My problem is that I cannot run down to the finish line because I have to watch this on the TV. <laughs> so you're really lucky at home that you can watch this on the TV. Oh, so no. Sebi pulled away now. Now Lionel is. is trying to fight back. So Sebastian talked about it in, in that, uh, that clip that we saw not long ago about it's only 15 minutes of pain. So this is the point. He's going to have to dig mentally into those reserves to go, I want those 15 minutes of pain. I want to give it everything i don't want to let this one go but it is just getting tougher and tougher and tougher because that gap is growing it's probably up to what five six meters now is this going to be the uh, defining moment of the race it could well be nope way it's not so it's not this is sebastian is punching back just wait for it just wait for <laughs> it i'm sure he will because now they're like going a bit downhill yeah, so this is on the, yes. the, re the return leg. But remember, when they get back, they're going to have two, at least two out and back sections. So there's an out and back section on the uh, the way to the swim start, and then they've got the out and back uh, around the horse uh, sculpture. 
But remember, guys, this is what motivates Sebastian as well. He had been dreaming about this the last couple of nights, I'm sure. He knows what he's capable of doing. And I don't know how far he is behind now, but I still believe that they will run uh, side by side. It's a little bit of a bigger gap. So that's what, probably up to six, seven seconds. Yeah. So it's going to take some real serious digging deep. Um, for he, Sebastian to, to fight back, or has, has Lionel, has he gone too early? We never know. We, we, we don't, don't know. know. No, we don't know yet. So in the women's race, it's also developing down there from behind. Uh, we still, of course, have Lucy in the lead, and she has a big gap on the other girls, and we're just waiting for some more times. For I think we have Radka in second place. He just ran past the windows. He looked really strong out there. Then we have Heather Vittel closing in on Kimberly Morrison. Uh, but we have to wait for the confirmation before we will tell too much. But right now, this is insane what we are looking at here. So once again, I think Lionel is uh, he's going to say, I think you're going to get the quote at the finish line. This is my prediction. He's yeah. going to say, I smelled the blood again. I smelled the blood again. <laughs> I want something more crazy from him. That's not okay. I want something more emotional, you know. I want to see some tears. You can see Seppi is not giving this up. He is nope. digging as deep as he can. No one is giving this up because there's just a few Ks to go. And with this speed they're running in. Oh, wow. This is amazing. So they're going down uh, on this section. This is an out and back. So they'll go a turn at that. Uh, looks like a little uh, lighthouse sculpture. Then they will return back past the, the horse stables that they're just passing on the screen. They make a right hand turn. Then it's back the same way for another out and back around the horse sculpture. And then it is the almost the, the final turn or almost the final turn that takes them onto the infield of the horse racing circuit and then is a, a little loop before they are, whoever is in the lead will make the turn and the welcome turn onto the red carpet. John, I actually think I have to run down to the finish line because we only have 2k to go and with that speed I better be there. I better, better be in time. You better be there. You, uh, you might want to take them some uh, some medication, uh, so I, something. What should I bring them, you think? <laughs> a cold beer? They, or? They're going to need something. So, uh, yeah. so Michelle is going to uh, just leave me now for to just call in the, uh, the end of the men's race. She is heading down towards the finish line. And uh, shortly after uh, our leading uh, duo, which at the moment looks like it's going to be Lionel Sanders and Sebastian Kinley have hopefully grabbed their breath. Yeah, you'll be able to hear from them. Kinlay came around that, uh, well, probably the penultimate um, U-turn, and uh, it did look a little bit tired. Not surprising. Um, I think uh, looking at that gap, he knows this one has gone. Um, just in the, the background there, just to give a little bit of coverage to uh, one of our age groupers, uh, that's Ruth Purbrook from Great Britain. Uh, races for the team Free Speed, and... Uh, haven't uh, got the results in front of me, but uh, Ruth typically is one of the fastest age groupers uh, in pretty much every race that she does, so I would expect uh, Ruth to do well today. But while she is on one of the earlier laps, Lionel Sanders is uh, continuing to push. He is in, uh, what, the final mile of the race now. And it has been a tough, tough race for him today. A non-wetsuit swim probably wasn't the news that he wanted to start the day. Coming out of the swim and finding a deficit of 1 minute 45 to his perennial long-term rival, Sebastian Kinlay, absolutely was not the news that he wanted. And a very unusual situation for him of coming off the bike in seventh position over three minutes in arrears would definitely not have been part of the plan but it would appear that absolutely none of that has phased him. He has been uh, one of the most consistent and uh, highest profile triathletes for uh, several years now. The reigning ITU long distance world champion, the second place 
finisher, silver medalist at the Ironman World Championships in Hawaii in October. Our defending champion here in Samarin, Slovakia at the championship. And as he comes up with just one kilometer to go, it looks like your champion once again will be Lionel Sanders. So I'll be getting lots of support here. This is coming back to the main center area of the Xbionic Sphere where many of the athletes racing today will be based. The hotel here has been full. Not surprisingly, uh, around the race, a fantastic venue. So Lionel coming up to the giant silver horse, which is the, uh, the iconic symbol of the X-Bionic Sphere. He is in a world of pain looking at that face. But I'm sure when we hear from him after, as much as it's hurting, that is exactly what he wants. He loves to race the best. He loves to dig deep, to go to the well, to find out exactly what it is. He says his triathlon ambition is to, to race and train as if there are no limits. He doesn't believe in limits. He's not putting any self-imposed limits on what he might be able to do. And uh, he is not far away now, so we get ready to we get ready to welcome your 2018 champion at the finish line. The band are rocking down on the ground. Announcer Kevin McKinnon will be getting ready as I stand up here in our commentary position. Looking down on the finish line, Lionel will very, very soon be on the infield. You can see him heading towards us now, so I'd say he's maybe got around 300 metres, no more than that. He's on the giant screen here at the finish line. He's running across the grass, and this time... He will not have to go out onto a fourth lap and never will the finish line have been more welcome. It's been another epic battle. The crowd go wild. He makes the left hand turn. He's now into the grandstand area in front of the stadium. He's on the red carpet. The gap is significant. He knows he's not under threat now. He's in an absolute world of pain. He's really had to work for this one. It's had to come in a way that he wasn't expecting. A difficult swim. The fastest bike split, which still left him three minutes down at T2. But how happy is this man? Lionel Sanders is on the finish straight. He's coming up to the line. He is going to defend his championship title. Congratulations, Lionel Sanders, the champion of the championship. What a fantastic performance from Lionel Sanders. As always, you know, this guy leaves everything out on the course. And we will not have to wait very long at all until we see your second place finisher. He's on the red carpet. He's in the, the, uh, the parade area in front of the grandstand. He's being given a very warm welcome and quite, quite rightly too. What a brilliant performance today. He's given it absolutely everything. He can go away from here with no regrets. He high fives the crowd on the finish line. He's going to be disappointed, but he knows he's thrown the kitchen sink at this race, everything he had. And that will be another memorable battle that will go down in the history of our sport. Second place for the second year from Germany, Sebastian Kienler.